That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about all the beauty and the bloodshed. The sixth documentary and fifth solo from Laura Poitras, the Oscar-winning documentarian, uh, which won the Golden Lion at the 2022 Venice Film Festival. Uh, Neon is releasing it just in time for Thanksgiving, uh, November 23rd, 2022. Do I know Laura's other documentaries? Uh, I'm sure you've heard you've heard of Citizen Four. She won her Oscar for about Snowden. Okay. Uh, and then I've also seen Risk, uh, which is about Julian Assange. So maybe perhaps not. I don't know, but she's uh, quite notable. Fun fact, though, I did stay in the same pod as Snowden in Moscow when I was stuck at the Moscow airport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I thought this documentary was excellent. Same. Yeah. It benefits from um, sort of the coalition of two very riveting subjects yes but it's about a woman named nan golden who's mm -hmm. a notable artist specifically a photographer mm -hmm. and her work i think founding an organization called pain yes. p-a-i-n which stands for uh prescription addiction intervention now so helping people addicted to i think various drugs but we're really focused on her connection to opioid addiction and really her work Trying to, I mean, I guess we could say trying to take down the Sackler family mm -hmm. who own Purdue. And we know from many documentaries and recently the popular, I believe, Hulu. Yeah, Dope series, Sick. Mm -hmm. Dope Sick. Um, so it's not, it's nice that it doesn't sort of retread a lot of steps. Like we know that Purdue was found guilty of certain actions and was ordered to pay a large sum, which was not enough. And that the family was protected. So and and signed a deal that they would never be face criminal charges or neither their would their like ancestors blah 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 so of course something needs to be done and nan's mission has been to try to get the sackler name off of a lot of museums using the platform that she is herself invested in as a notable artist who is included uh in, in many she's a permanent feature in yeah. many of these museums yes. so she has some weight and she did throw it around to great uh effect which took some time. Which took some time. We start uh, with footage from 2018 of a protest and then kind of end with four years later, uh, we see that the names start to finally be removed. Yes. So um, I don't have any notes because, I, I mean, it, it really is uh, captivating and I, I would highly recommend watching it. But what I wasn't expecting was, because I didn't know who Nan Golden was before, what, like what a remarkable life yeah fascinating you know even without it this portrait being married to something that's ongoing and tragic fascinating as it were uh i don't know just i i could have listened to her speak forever you know and going through her own s slideshows very queer friendly queer adjacent yes so um that was a surprise but I'll let you continue because you've seen this twice now. Yeah, I saw it uh, at Venice, and I can I definitely understand why it won. Uh, I, I even watching it a second time, I was surprised at how emotional it, an experience it is. Because, uh, and you know, I think it's just a testament to how great Poitras is for how she puts it together, and uh, and there's like layers of resonance. Uh, because we go through Nan Golden's own personal life, and we it, this is also an homage to her older sister Barbara, who committed suicide very uh, drastically. That, which we don't we we know she committed suicide very early on. We don't find out till why at the end. And the quote of the movie is actually from uh, psychiatric transcripts about her sister making a statement about a Rorschach test and uh, saying that she in it she could see all the beauty and the bloodshed to come. And uh, but just having to grow up in with these parents that weren't as as nan golden says weren't equipped to be parents and, and nurture humans and how seeing her sister's rebellion and demise really is what laid the steps for her to become who she is and mm -hmm. and how uh, at cambridge meeting her best friend david armstrong like there's just there's just like the briefest little uh uh, thread of all tomorrow's parties which is a song i love but even even how that's used just briefly to introduce and create uh, an oral portrait of a, a kind of this person's vibe. Uh, it, and then, of course, uh, it, it's also a nice tribute to Cookie Mueller, uh, who is a fascinating, fabulous subject herself as well. And 
and all, all of these experiences that she relates are just uh, of a certain period, of a certain time and place. Very rich. Uh, very rich and textured. And it's more, I think what's powerful, it's in every regard, it's more than just about her, even when it's just professing to be about her. Yeah. I, I think that's the magic is that if, yeah, what, what you ditto. <laughs> because, and again, the most frustrating parts, and, uh, of course, are, you know, how the Sacklers basically are, kind of getting away with everything and I, I one of the hardest scenes to watch is really when the Sacklers are forced forced on camera because you know we're in COVID, the COVID so they're not, they're not even seeing them in person technically but they're forced for two hours to sit and listen to some victims some victims and victims family members make statements that and I don't know it it seems like such a hollow triumph oh we've been attacked uh Yes. It seems like such a hollow triumph, and, and yet it's also, it's important in itself, and I think that the documentary uh, is an extra, will provide at least an extra time capsule of a certain, something being said to one's face. And I don't know, it's just so depressing that that is the best that we can have done, but yeah. besides having their names taken off. But, you know, it, I think if you're unfamiliar with Golden or uh, a lot of her peers and colleagues, like there were people I didn't know about this, like the filmmaker Vivian Dick, for instance, and uh, just all these weird anecdotes of, of New York, of Provincetown, of it's, it's just so vibrant. And then, of course, when the AIDS crisis hit and uh, David War Warnerovich, if you're not familiar with him, there's a documentary about him. I'm forgetting the name of the title. Uh, and, you know, just uh, the installation that she first curated, um, what was the name of it? Witnesses Against Our Vanishing and kind of the fear that uh, kicked up because uh, grants were withdrawn because the installation was about uh, queer, aid, people, queer people, AIDS, AIDS victims, yeah. people living with AIDS and how <laughs> the Warnerovich quote, which is good enough to, I think, keep repeating about calling the Pope a, a fat cannibal in a black skirt. <laughs> It's very apt. What else you got? I, I don't know. Just, I, I, I think that it's deeper. If you were just to read what this is about, you know, like when I'm go, going into like the Venice Film Festival, I'm just like, okay, this is something I'm, uh, you know, uh, agreeing to watch, but I really... Yeah, was... I think the synopsis on, or the, the, the premise on IMDb really doesn't do justice to, I think, how um, textured this documentary is. And I don't know. It just seems... I think what's also sad is thinking back to a time when people were not afraid to be disruptive and to rail against conformity and also create these networks despite, you know, without the internet and how all of these people seemed ready to want to help and support one another, which is just, is really not a vibe that feels at least authentically as I want to believe this woman's experiences were like the the woman named Maggie Smith, not the actor who ran Tin Pan Alley, uh, specifically as a bar for uh, sex workers trying to get out of sex work if they wanted to, and how they she refused to hire male bodyguards so they to avoid relying on that part of th this hierarchy that we feed into that's a necessity. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's just a nice refreshing reminder, you know. It feels in many ways in a uh, contemporary world that we have so far to go, but in many, way, in many ways we've already been there. We've gone very far and we've just been pushed much farther back, it seems like. But I, and I've, you know, I've had family members come to find that struggled with opioid addiction and I myself was was a bit ignorant. I, I've seen movies, there's other documentaries about it, but you know, when something doesn't directly affect you, it's sad how easily you can avoid having to really kind of deal with it behind news stories and headlines and uh, after this is what the, I'm like well I should probably watch Dope Sick even though uh, there are informative things about that but it's very much uh, calibrated to be something else but uh, worth watching uh, but not realizing how insidious this is in the Sackler family template uh, through Valium which created paved the way for what oxycotton became i don't know there there's there's it's sprawling to a degree uh and there are many points of entry but all of them are worthwhile what would you give this documentary uh four out of five 
I would give it four out of five as well. Anything else? No, this is a very uh, brief review. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I mean, it, I, I really would strongly recommend it. It's such a magical experience to, because I think hearing about Nan Golden's life, not knowing who she was, was like such a beautiful journey. But then the backdrop of this persistent issue of like the opioid crisis, it, it's such a yeah, magical experience. Well, and how these systems fail us, how they failed her sister, who is, who is, that's about misdiagnosis. She's, there are notes she sees in those files that she's just a normal teacher and maybe and the mother is maybe the one that needs the attention and how that system continues to fail us and, uh, you know, very perniciously was uh, helped to instigate this current crisis that still continues to fail us. I could go on and on. I mean, there's someone in the documentary saying, ta talking about how these people were allowed to profit from other people's pain, but it's like, we have a system that is allowing that. So really, I mean, there, there's a much bigger monster to attack. And the, I mean, the, the work is getting done in very, like, segmented pieces and, also, and something revolutionary needs to happen and it and it's like it feels so s slow and steady wins the race or i want to quote ne galaxy quest never give up never surrender <laughs> um you know the response to the museums in my mind is I extremely slow and still not complete and i i want what these institutions in the u.s need to be like the louvre right which i think was it two days after they made that protest is they took they removed the names and no other museums followed for quite some time. It, it, I find it just, I don't know, fear, infuriating that we are, you know, inundated with, with facts. And well, what we don't hear from, who, who we don't hear from um, it are these entities that were slow on the uptake. And there are politics behind that, that... Of course, but it, I'm sure it'd be frustrating to know. But you know, but there's no transparency that 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 the message has been received, and that hey, we have to deal with these these things first. But we hear you, and we are going to get there. But again, there are bigger issues. Like I mean, we don't have quality health care for everyone. Uh, yes, so there are like, there are bigger. You know, we're talking about a very small component of a much bigger issue. So. Yeah, we, we could go on and on, but I, I, I would highly recommend watching this. Where is it streaming? Uh, Neon is releasing. Oh, Neon is releasing. Uh, just, she has a lot of quotes too, but something else that re really resonated, and, and again, how it, it's edited together, because we hear all this stuff about the mother that would make you think she's, Nan Gold's mother, that make you think she's a monster, and then we see footage towards the end uh, of an unfinished documentary, and uh, of this kind of this frail older woman, but she speaks of her daughter that killed herself, and it's also emotional, and she shares that on her, on her body, she found a quote from Conrad's Heart of Darkness that, you know, it's difficult to listen to. But another thing she said that resonated was, you know, we, when we talk about things, the wrong things are kept secret, and I, I, we still maintain we still maintain that rigidity. I think, especially in the United States, of that fifty sense of conformity and of um, keeping this false this falsehood up, this facade that everything's okay when most certainly everything is not. All done? Sure. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.